Well, there were several WWE, WWE UK names that came out. And at the end of the day, as of this moment, only Jack Gallagher has been fired. Yeah. Owned by WWE. Other other companies like... Um, so, so Progress and OTT have, have cut ties with a lot of people, though, that, were, that are WWE guys, which is interesting. But WWE has not... Yeah, only Jack Gallagher... Um, obviously, the nature of, of with with Gallagher, um, and I don't know. I don't know what what was the the situation with him, why they specifically got rid of him only and nobody else at this point. Um, he's a main roster guy, um, you know. Especially with so many, you know, with so many different things that have been said about. So many different WWE UK guys. I mean, there's a lot of people who are feared that they'll just shut down the whole UK thing um, over this and over the fact that it really wasn't working anyway. And it's it's original. The original, you know, um, idea of WWE UK was really just to kill world of sport wrestling and, and it accomplished that purpose. But then later, you know, it became part of this big plan of NXT offices all over the world which sort of they've kind of rolled back on now that they're trying to consolidate everything, um, you know, because the original plan was that would be the the um, template, you know, the w, the NXT UK, and then they would do, you know, Mexico and Japan and India and Middle East and everything. You know, that's that was the, you know, places all over the world have NXT outposts. That was the plan. But now, you know, it's kind of like let's consolidate everything. Maybe we'll do expansion to step in a couple of years. Um, you know, cut down expenses and things like that. So, um, but the whole, you know, the entire UK scene, uh, you know, it looks, it's, 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 it's a bad situation because so many of the key guys that built the scene, like, like, you know, that were the key guys in the scene have been named. And then it's going to be one of these situations where can you use these guys? Um, how long until you use these guys? Are they gone for good? Um, and these are all questions that it's too early to answer. Although, I mean, David's David Starr situation does not look; it doesn't look good for him as far as as far as any time soon. It could be the end of his career. So WWE they issued this zero tolerance statement, and they state here that. Individuals are responsible for their own personal actions. WWE has zero tolerance for matters involving domestic violence, child abuse, and sexual assault. Upon arrest for such misconduct, a WWE talent will be immediately suspended. Upon conviction for such They'll misconduct, They'll be fired. they will be fired. But it says, WWE's ability to fine, suspend, or terminate a WWE talent will not be, however, limited or compromised in any manner in the event incontrovertible evidence of such legal misconduct is presented to WWE. So what they're yes. saying is, even if you're not uh, arrested or they charged, they if they are given incontrovertible evidence, they'll fire you. So, so th it does make me wonder, what did they get on Gallagher? Yeah. I mean, uh, they must have had some evidence. Yeah. I mean... Um it's you know it it it's it, it's it's a hard situation um but we'll have to see how all this stuff plays out um but uh yeah i mean a lot of the uk promotions have, have cut ties with a lot of people right now uh Ligero with wwe not so Ligero, like Ligero's not been been cut by WWE. Legero is Legero is a trainer, and that's kind of what we talked about the trainer student thing. That's definitely, you know, where the the, the claims on Legero are. And Jordan Devlin. Jordan Devlin's a different type of situation. Yeah, he's 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 a key guy on the UK scene. He's one of their biggest stars. And the other WWE name was Matt Riddle. Uh, there's a lot of others, Wolfgang. Um, I mean, just different stories. Um, um, but as, as far as Matt Riddle goes, there's there's nothing that has come out with Matt Riddle that WWE was not aware of years ago. So um, 
the situation with Matt Riddle. Now, I mean, it's funny I say this. I was thinking about this. You know, okay, this is all the the, the Matt Riddle stuff it, um, with the, uh, the the woman wrestler. I mean, this is this has been an ongoing thing that they are aware of, and obviously they have come to a conclusion that you know he's still there and and getting a push. So in theory, this should not make a difference with Matt Riddle in their in their eyes. Um, I say that knowing, and this is a completely different thing, but it's the same. But it's it's it's, it's similar in a sense. If you remember, you know, like the Lars Sullivan thing, which was the, which was the the racist tweets, okay, uh, the stupid tweets, okay, that Lars Sullivan did, you know, before he was ever even wrestling, okay, but WWE was well aware of that, and it was all okay. It was stupid. It was dumb. It's you know years ago, and then it came up a second time because it came up first time, you know, when he was in NXT. And then it came up a second time as soon as he got, you know, s shortly after he got on the main roster. And they fined him $100,000 for something that they had already gone through and said, okay, it's before you, you were here. So when I say that the Matt Riddle thing in theory is settled and, you know, that's the impression that I have because they know about it. I have to remember with Lars Sullivan that, you know, I was told, you know, same thing and it wasn't and it ended up not being the same thing. So if You know um, It's different, you know, they're completely different stories. I you know um, You know one's a lot worse than the other, but I don't think they they you know But one you know the the Lars Sullivan story was true and with Matt Riddle clearly um, They don't believe it um, and that's a you know, a belief that they've had for years. So that's the situation with Matt Riddle as of the last I've heard. And that's why he was on the TV show, and that's why he's getting a push. And I don't expect that to change. But, you know, he's again saying that everything's subject to change. A lawyer issued a statement. The allegations are completely false. Another attempt to harass and humiliate Mr. and Ms. Riddle. And to try to tarnish their reputation, we have been aware for the last two years of this performer stalking the Riddle family. In 2019, our firm had drafted a pleading against this performer to seek an injunction for cyberstalking in the circuit court for Orange County, Florida. So they're saying this has been ongoing for two years. Now. Well, WWE's known about it for two years. Yes. And so probably from the very start, because he was already, he was with the dub. Was he, has he been with WWE for two years? I think maybe maybe not. No, no, he hasn't been with WWE for two straight years. But they've known WWE's known about this from the start. So you know that's that's the situation. This is not new. To, none of this is new to them, even if it's new to us. He signed with WWE in 2018. That's two years. So two years, yeah. So probably when he signed. All right. So as far as other names to talk about here, David Lagana out of NWA. Yeah, and NWA, you know, and David Lagana did, you know, it was basically, you know, uh, Billy Corgan owns NWA, and David Lagana was basically the guy, in, the vice president, the guy in charge, the guy who produced all the television, the guy who came up with so much of the creative ideas. Uh, I mean, he was basically the guy, you know, it's really David Lagana and Nick Aldis uh, were really the the focal points of this company's comeback. And now everything, you know, there's going to be no production be until they get new people in because Dave, that was David Lagana. So he was an, a super important person in that company. And I mean, his, the story on him, I mean, it was swift. As soon as that story came out, they got, they got rid of him. And it was, um, a woman wrestler who, um, so what's the story on with, with the, a woman wrestler was, he invited her to stay at his place. She'd been living at his place. Um, they would sleep in the same bed, but fully clothed. And then she claimed that he did something while she was asleep and then kicked her out. That is the mm, gist of the allegation, yes. Yeah, well, that's... Believe me, you know, I have seen and, you know, I have seen some stuff that just it revolted me in the last, you know, tapes that people have sent me that of the people have sent women wrestlers holy fuck it's like that there, there's some real sick stuff out there i mean like uh it's just it's so bad 
I mean, but you know, these are these are. I don't say they are isolated incidents. These are the worst of the worst, but they certainly exist in this industry. But it, it and this is this is what I'm talking about. This is, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's not ma at the major league level, but at the you know minor league independent level, um, there's in some cases there's some really bad stuff going on, and and. You know, again, I I believe every woman in this that's been in this business, or most, I, I every may be too strong, but I'll bet you most women who've been in this business have had some pretty bad experiences um, at one point or another with somebody. Um, that's how, you know, I mean, that's how bad it is. In AEW, Jimmy Havoc, the following statement released: We wish Jimmy Havoc all the best as he receives treatment and counseling. In an effort to overcome the mental health and substance abuse challenges in his life, we are aware of various reports related to Jimmy. We are evaluating his status with our company and will address it when he has successfully completed his rehabilitation. Essentially, when you go to rehab in a situation like this, they really can't fire you until you're done. But I would say, um, you know, again, unless, you know, the, some of the stuff with Jimmy is pretty, pretty, pretty severe. It's pretty significant. If, if true, um, it's going to be a bad, a real bad situation for him, unfortunately, or you know, whatever. It, everything's unfortunate. And who else have we not talked about yet? Joey um, Ryan. Joey Ryan. Um, Joey Ryan. Did, did have you seen what he said? I've I have seen I saw his his apology. Yeah, he made an he made an apology. He didn't he didn't he did not admit to anything in specific, but as a generalization, he he admitted to the fact that he's been going to counseling for a couple of years and um that he did a lot of things that, that he regrets. Is that the basic gist of what he said? Yes. Yeah. Um Troy Ryan, that's Impact Wrestling, so Impact Wrestling is going to have to make a decision on on his situation. 